So I want us to look at something in the word of God, the book of Revelation, and uh, it is uh, promises uh, upon uh, our life. And uh, we take our Bibles, the book of Revelation, let us look at chapter 1, the book of Revelation, chapter 1. And, uh, Always, the, the book has been uh, considered to be a mystic book, a book that cannot be understood. I told you one day when uh, a student was much reading in this book, and uh, the professor uh, passed along. This, uh, this young man loved uh, to read uh, this book. Every day the professor will pass along and uh, he will uh, see him uh, reading this book. And uh, the professor was like, uh, why, why, why do you like reading that book that uh, cannot be understood? Why do you like reading that book that cannot be understood? Give it up on reading it. It's like the professor was ridiculing him. And uh, the young man uh, uh, looked at the professor respectively and told him, uh, really, what you are saying is true. I can't understand this book, but uh, there is only one point which I have come to understood, uh, understand, which is more important to me. Although it seems a mystery to me, but it is so much important to me. And what is the point, professor? Don't you think it is wonderful that the lamb is going to defeat the beast and I want to be on the side of the lamb and uh, th this was the motivation of this young student in the college when the professor was ridiculing him that he was reading always the book of revelation and so uh, I, I can identify with this student I don't understand the book of revelation somehow as it should be understood but um, one thing I'm sure of that uh, the lamb is going to win. When the story is ending, you find that the lamb is winning, is it? Mm. And uh, he, when you read Revelation uh, chapter 7 and uh, chapter 14, in chapter 7, it talks about the those who are on the side of the lamb also winning. Just look at it as we look at, at the blessings of the book of Revelation. Check with me the book of Revelation. Uh, because it, it's full of beasts and horns and all these things that are, sometimes they are so difficult to understand. The book of Revelation is full of these things that you don't understand. Uh, but look at Revelation uh, chapter 7. And, uh, look at verse 14. And I said unto him, chapter 7, verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They have made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. While the beasts are struggling here and here, but uh, these ones, they see that there's something in the Lamb and they wash their robes in the blood of the lamb uh, look at uh, revelation chapter 6 we are looking at the promises of the book of revelation chapter 7 we may not have a deep study on the book of revelation but we are just looking of, at the highlights you may not understand the whole book things are there which are somehow difficult to understand but uh, the injunction is, blessed are they who read and they who understand the book. But what if somebody is not understanding the book? You, you, you can just share in these blessings. Look at Revelation chapter 6, verses uh, 12. Revelation 6, 12. 
2 verses 17. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of air, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as the fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens. Hmm? They hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains. And say to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. The beast is hiding from the Lamb, which means that the Lamb is powerful. Why is the lamb powerful? The other beasts do not shed any blood for cleansing anyone, but the lamb sheds the blood to cleanse us. And what does man need? The cleansing power. For him to be able to dwell in the presence of God, he needs the cleansing power. And so while the other beasts are shedding blood, they are not shedding blood, or they have not shed blood to wash or cleanse anyone yeah but here you find the lamb has shed the blood to cleanse the people and if the people are cleansed then they are able to stand in the presence of the lord because it makes them as white as snow it reunites themselves with them to the the lord and for the day of the uh, wrath of god has come and who shall be able to stand that is the question is asked and many are running and the beasts are, uh, these kingdoms are actually running from the presence of the Lord. But those who are hidden in the Lamb are able to stand. Look at verse 11 of Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, as we go uh, deeply into this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. First of all, you find that uh, in verse 9, the great dragon, another big beast, huh? A dragon is a big beast, is it? Yeah. It is thrown out of some place in heaven. Uh, I'm looking at this at the most basic way and the most practical way. A beast, a big beast falls from the skies to the earth. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out of, out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So we have this great dragon if you used to uh, look at these films uh, you could see the, the kingdom of empires uh, the, the throne of empires and all these films that were filled with great dragons the serpent spewing fire and all these things you could see them fall from the sky to the earth and they they were like aliens and they were invading the people and then a person could look like a grasshopper in front of these dragons. And so these dragons comes from the sky and falls down. And verse 10, and I beheld a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Verse 11, and how do people overcome this dragon that is spewing fire that has just fallen from sky? And they overcame him by what? The blood of the lamb. That small beast, that small animal. And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. So you found that uh, uh, this, this, this lamb has a power that uh, beasts don't have, the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. So uh, I can identify with the, this student when he says that he don't understand the book of Revelation, but one thing he's sure of is that the lamb at the end of everything wins. And so let us go back to Revelation chapter 1. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified them <laughs> by his angel unto his servant John very interesting that uh, God in his mercies 
gave the children of Israel the sanctuary. And uh, on the veils of the sanctuary, we had the angels. And, you know, the, the angels are curious to know the plan of redemption because they know not what sin is. They have not been burdened as humanity has been burdened by the uh, uh, by sin. And uh, the angels are on the veil and they are standing between the most holy place and the people who are standing there and entering the most holy place by faith. And the angels are sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. They are ministering spirits and they are Holy Spirit. They have in them the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so they can minister the spirit. They are giving out the spirit. They are standing between the holy place, most holy place and uh, the children of God who are entering the most holy place by faith. And so God, the children of God are praying, Father, give us thy Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, Jesus Christ will receive this gift, and then he will shed it forth through a mysterious way, through the channel of the angels, through the channel of uh, he, he, his word. When you look at, at Titus, just hold your finger there. Jesus, when he's going to heaven, he prays for something that will be able to... Uh, who will be able to uh, break the barrier of sin. And sin, we are told that sin had been uh, uh, actually uh, uh, strengthening and getting hold of uh, the earth subject. And there was no other way that it could be resisted. And then we are told that sin could only be resisted by the third person of the Godhead. And Christ has given his divine spirit to overcome every evil heredity, every propensity, evil propensity for the sons of men. And uh, here the children of God are in the last days and in the days of the revival, they are praying that Father give us thy Holy Spirit and uh, Titus, is it Titus chapter 3? The book of um, uh, Titus. And uh, look at Titus chapter 3, verse 4. Let us just start from verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves, we were sometimes what? Foolish, Foolish and what? Disobedience deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. As the beasts in Revelation, they are hating one another. This is the kind of uh, spirit we had. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man did what? Did appear. Not by what? Works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And so we pray daily for the Lord to give us the Holy Spirit to sanctify, sanctify them. Uh, it has been given unto us uh, these promises of sanctification by the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, which he did what? Well, they are praying that give us thy Holy Spirit. Verse 6 says that which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So the children of God, God has shed on them the Holy Spirit through his son, Jesus Christ. And he has given them uh, the angels as ministering uh, uh, spirits to be able to minister unto the heirs of uh, uh, salvation. Uh, Peter also speaks uh, of the same thing, of uh, uh, the, the, the shedding of the Holy Spirit in, uh, is it in Acts chapter 2? He, he speaks about uh, God shedding upon his Holy Spirit, upon the children of God. Whether it is in Acts chapter 2 or in Acts chapter 3, someone can find it speedily. The promise, the promise of the uh, 
Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. Have you found it? Okay, the chapter 2. Look at uh, chap uh, chapter 2 from verse 33, I think. Acts chapter 2. Uh, yes. 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 The son said that uh, he shall go to the father and solicit the best gift that he can have for his children. I'll not leave unto you comfortless. I'll come back to you. I'll be with you always. And he goes to the father and he receives the Holy Spirit and he sheds it forth. So the father has shed forth the Holy Spirit through his son. And so in Revelation, it introduces another uh, 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 character, which are the angels, which are assisting the children of God to overcome the world, even the angels ministering unto earth. And it says that who bear record of the word of God, of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and all, all things that he saw. And verse 3 says that blessed is the, he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. But the time is not in distant. And uh, uh, when people look at the book of Revelation, they, they get engrossed in uh, many things. Uh, and it's good to get engrossed in these things, the seals, the trumpets, the beasts, and strange looking entities. Uh, while these things are actually there, what is the main focus? What should be the main focus of the book of Revelation? It is uh, uh, the deeper relationship that uh, the people who are reading this book have with Jesus Christ to understand what they ought to do. Amidst the roaring of the seas, amidst the struggling and jostling of powers in the book of Revelation, there is one thing the saints are struggling with, to be in the position that the Lamb is in, to be in the position that um, the Lamb is in. This is the most important thing that um, the children of God should consider while they are reading the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, let us look at the promises that, that is made with the people who are having a relationship because we find that uh, while the beasts are fighting for power, the children of God are overcoming this beast by the Lamb of God. Uh, in, the, in the church of Ephesus, uh, it was the church of uh, apostles from uh, 31 to 100 AD. Uh, during this time, the doctrines of Jesus were spread through the work of the apostles and uh, mainly Paul worked for, for the church. Tragically, some people became tired of the pillars of the truth and started preaching new ideas. They had left their first love and Christ rebuked them for this. In Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 to 5, it says that, uh, Remember therefore from when thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I'll come unto, th unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of the blessed place except ye repent. There is a promise given to this church that uh, if they repent, if they go back to the first love, God will still have the candlestick there. And so he's reminding them, remember when thou hast fallen, remember thy first work. And if you go back to the first work, then the candlestick shall continue to be there. The candlestick shall continue uh, 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 burning there. Uh, in Revelation chapter uh, Seven. Now look at this promise. If they go back to the first love, they, in fact, there were those in Ephesus who were not caught up by strange new doctrines. They held steadfast to the truth of the three angels' messages. They were promised, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that does what? Overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. These are the promises of, of, of the word of God. And you will always find that uh, God is promising his church, no matter how despicable their condition is, 
God is telling them, if you remember that it is the blood of the Lamb that sanctifies it, that other kingdoms can give you everything that you need temporarily on this earth, but there is something more important than what the other kingdoms, what the beast powers can give you. We have this beast called the Lamb. It is not only promising you things which are temporary, but it is promising you things which are everlasting to him that overcometh. A great controversy, page 489, has to say this through uh, 489. Great controversy, 489. This is um, what uh, we get. Through the true defects in the character, Satan works to gain control of the whole mind, and he knows that if these defects are cherished, he will succeed. Therefore, he is constantly seeking to deceive the followers of Christ with his fatal sophistry that it is impossible for them to overcome. Satan has laid out traps to cheat the children of God that they cannot overcome. But, God, but Jesus pleads in their behalf his wounded hands, his bruised body, and he declares to all who will follow him, My grace is sufficient for thee. 2 Corinthians 12, 19. My grace is sufficient for thee. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The book of Matthew 11, 29 and 30. Let none then regard their defects as incurable. God will give faith and grace to overcome sin. So to the church of Ephesus, although they had left the first love, God is telling them, come back. Although Satan has ensnared you, this is the message to all of us. There are things which have drawn us back. The world has enticed us. The other things, the other kingdom of the beast have enticed us with their things. But God is saying, come back. What you are only following is some temporary things and the candlestick will be removed. But if you come back, uh, my grace is sufficient uh, and you can be able uh, to gain uh, uh, the faster uh, love that you had. Another promise is found in the church of Smyrna or Smyrna, the church under persecution. And you know very well that uh, Soon and very soon we shall be facing persecution. The church of Smyrna from 100 and to 313 AD was a church under fire. The Roman emperors Marcus Aurelius, 161 to 180, uh, those, those were the years he ruled Septimius Severus, 193 to 211, Maximus the Thracian, 235 to 38, Valerian, we had Diocletian, all persecuted the Christian in one way or another. It was the edict of Milan by Constantine that put an end to 10 years of violent persecution of Christians. Let us just look at this church of uh, uh, Smyrna. I'm going with them step by step. That uh, there is persecution that uh, went on in that church. Yes, and uh, at the end of uh, the Church of Smyrna in uh, uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 11, he says that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So these are the promises that the Lord is having. And uh, in verse 10, look at verse 10 of the Church of Smyrna. Uh, 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 the book of uh, Revelation chapter 2. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation <coughs> ten days. Those are ten years. Be thou faithful unto death, I'll, and I will give thee a crown of life. Jesus is assuring them that even though they, they die of this persecution, there is a resurrection for them. And this is the promises we even have today. 
that uh, we should not fear him who killeth the flesh, but we should be afraid of him that uh, actually uh, can destroy us in the lake of fire or in the second death. And so, although we be afflicted, although the Roman emperors cut off these people, although they made people miserable, but uh, uh, their lives and our life is securely hidden in Jesus Christ and have eternity. Men may take the first life, but they cannot take it, take it forever. They, they, they can make us go through the consequences of the first day, cut our life short on this earth, but uh, there is the promise of God that um, he shall be with us. The church of Pergamos, there was a lot of compromises in the church of Pergamos. It was a church known for its compromise. Uh, there is a man there, the man uh, uh, Balak and Balaam, Balak, who taught uh, the, 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 Balaam, who taught the children of Israel to sacrifice to idol, and taught Balak to cause a stumbling block upon the children of God. He was so successful that in the book of Numbers chapter 25, we find that he enticed the children of God and 24,000 Israelites perished in Numbers chapter 25. There was bold-faced apostasy because they departed from the Lord. But God says something in Revelation chapter 2 verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written with no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it so in a christian life you can appear under these different churches but god does not leave us hopeless but uh, he actually entreats us to come back to him and be able to see what is the weightier matter, he that overcometh. And remember, he overcometh. How does he overcome? He overcomes by the blood of the Lamb. We must have a special fellowship with Jesus Christ, a deep spiritual experience for us to be able to overcome the compromises that are in the world. I don't know. A question is always asked. Is Christianity an easy thing? What will you answer? Is being a Christian a simple thing? Yeah, people will say no, others will say yes, but uh, I don't know, maybe it's from the perspective that you look at. Christianity to me is not a simple thing because it, it calls for a life of death and people fear death. Is there anyone that loves death? Uh, Christianity calls for death. And uh, steps to Christ. Look at steps to Christ. SC 43. Steps to Christ. 43, paragraph 3. I want, I, I want us to see this. We are talking about the blessings that the Lord has decreed for us in the book of Revelation. I'm talking about forgetting about all these beasts and what they are achieving. At the end of the day, this student says, I don't understand the book of Revelation, but there is one thing that has captured my mind. The lamb defeated the beasts. This was the statement of the student. And that is what I'm looking at, the blessings of being on the lamb's side. Um, steps to Christ 43.3, it says, the warfare against what? Self is the greatest battle that was ever. Fighting with the purpose is not the greatest battle that people will ever face. You know what? You can defeat the purpose alone. But what if you don't defeat self? You will never stand. When the Lord comes, you will never stand. You can bring down Goliath by yourself. And so he says the warfare against self is the greatest battle that was ever fought. 
the yielding of self, surrendering all to the will of God, requires a struggle. Right? We are looking at uh, what is the greatest battle to be ever fought. It is not about fighting your neighbor. It's not about fighting this kingdom of the purpose. It's not about bringing down the U.S. That is not the greatest battle to be ever waged. The greatest battle to be ever waged is the battle fought against self. It says that the yielding of self, surrendering all to the will of God, requires a struggle, but the soul must submit to God before it can be renewed in holiness. That is the greatest war to be ever waged. And uh, uh, still in the same book, uh, is it 47? AC 47? Let me see if it is the same book 47. 47.2. Look at it. The blessings of those who overcome. The lamb at last defeats the beast. But what is the greatest battle to be ever with? And what is what are the stakes in this battle? Steps to Christ, <clears throat> page 47.2. Desire for what? For goodness and Holiness as, as right as far as they go. We, we may desire everything good that we can desire. If we can desire to be Christians. We can desire to be medical missionaries. We can desire to be servants in the vineyard. But if you stop here, they will avail what? Nothing. Many will be lost while hoping and desiring to be Christians. They do not come to the point of yielding the will to God. They do not now choose to be Christians. You can desire all these things, and you can wage wars in this world, but um, the war against self. In, in this world, we are surrounded with many imitations, as it were in the church of Pergamos, and there are many compromises that were there. But God says in Revelation 2.17, that um, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name which no man knoweth, saving he that uh, receiveth it. And so, a new name. Think of a new name. What is in a name? A new name. Thou art called Jacob. Yes? Thou art called a deceiver. But now you are what? Israel, an overcomer. Thou hast fought with princes and have won. This is what the Lord says. I'll give you a new name. He will change our character completely. Self will be hidden and will be overcome. What is thy name? The Lord asked. And he's saying that he is willing to give a new name. Thy name is Jacob, but thou shalt be called Israel. Patriarchs and Prophet 197-198. The error that had led to Jacob's sin in obtaining the birthright by fraud was now clearly set before him. Patriarchs and Prophets 197-198. It says, The error that had led to Jacob's sin in obtaining the birthright by fraud was now clearly set before him. He had not trusted God's promises but had sought by his own efforts to bring about that which God will have accomplished in his own time and way. As an evidence that he had been forgiven, his name was changed from one that was a reminder of his sin to one that commemorated his victory. Thy name, said the angel, shall be called no more Jacob, the supplanter, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast thou prevailed. And so God is telling the church of Pergamos that I'll give you a new name. I'll give you a new name. God is willing to change our characters. Those who will share in the benefits of the Savior's mediation should permit nothing to interfere with their duty to perfect holiness in the fear of God. We have nothing to fear lest we forget the way the Lord has led us in our past history. Being compassed with a cloud of witness, let us put beside the sins that doth really uh, readily beset us. 
when we look at the Hebrew, uh, this is the words of the book of Hebrews chapter 12, that uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. But after that, it mentions the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and the men of faith who are able to go through everything they went through because of faith. And he says that, uh, let us fight this fight. Let us look unto Jesus Christ. All we need is to accept his working power, the lamb to work in us. In the church of the Atira, uh, uh, the rise of the papacy, the rise of the papacy in the, in the church of the Atira, and the, the mingling of the truth and error. In that church, uh, Rome sought to turn people from Christ and to send her on the Pope, a sinful, a frail man. And from 30, 538 AD down to the time of the reformers was Jezebel allowed to go almost without protest. They were ensnared from God. But uh, there were a few people there whom God still had. And this is what he tells them in verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I'll give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of porter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I'll give him the morning star, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So to this church of Thyatira, where actually the Pope arose and led men to look unto another man for their strength, still Christ says that look unto me. And I'll be able to give you power to rule over nations. In now, uh, when you go back to Revelation chapter one, verse six, verse five and verse six, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Remember, they are overcoming this beast by the blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So he's telling the church of the people in Thyatira that uh, he will give them power over nations. He shall make us kings if we overcome. And how are we to overcome? By the blood of the Lamb. We don't have to seek our our victory in every other place. Satan may make his strong attacks upon Christ than he will ever make upon us. There is nothing that we can go through that Christ himself never went through. If you think that you can go through anything difficult than what Christ went through, then you are deceived. Christ was tempted in every way that man is tempted, but he overcame. One disadvantage that Christ had over us is that he had the divine power, which he was not allowed to use. That, that, that was a disadvantage to Jesus Christ, that he had a power which he cannot use, but to rely on his Father. Yet he gives us that power to be able to overcome sin. That is the advantage we have over Jesus Christ. Him having, uh, and always we give the analogy, uh, uh, picture yourself, Having a weapon in your hand, and an enemy comes and wants to attack you, but you are not supposed to use that weapon. This is the situation that Jesus Christ was in, in the wilderness of temptation with Satan. And he never had to exercise. You see Satan telling Jesus Christ, turn these breads into stone. Did he have the power? He had the power to turn the stones into bread, but did he use the power? No. He learned how to defeat hunger so that he may teach you what is temperance, so that you may have a fit mind to go through the time of trouble. He never indulged in the appetite in that place so that he may give you that divine power to you be able to overcome. So Jesus Christ was disadvantaged and yet he goes through the life's problem by surrendering his will to the Father, a man of our like flesh, likeness, sinful flesh, and then procures his divine nature unto us by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may be able to overcome Satan. And so this is so wonderful to the churches of God. 
that uh, Christ staked his own interest so that we may live for him. So Satan can attack the children of God, but they cannot attack the children of God as, they, uh, as he attacked Jesus Christ. It was more. And we are told that the combination of uh, divinity and humanity made it so simple for Jesus Christ to sin. Imagine, the combination of divinity and humanity made it so easy for Jesus Christ to succumb to sin. But yet, he did not fall. He went through, he, he persevered and was able to overcome sin. Sadis, a church that was once lie, that, but it is dead. This was the church of reformation and beyond and started out so wonderfully. Luther and righteousness by faith and the solar uh, 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 scripture. The papacy as the antichrist. The truth spread like wildfire, but then people stopped studying, stopped leaning on the Lord and trusted in their leaders. Those were the big mistakes of Sardis. Let us just look at the church of Sardis. I'm just doing uh, some summarizing in the promises that are in these churches. Unto the angel of the church in Sardis right, this thing saith he that hath the seven spirit of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou liveth, and at what? Death. That thou have a name that liveth, that, but thou art dead. It may be so, that we have a name that we live. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I'll come upon thee. And verse 4, what does it say? Are we there? Yes. What does it say? Thou hast a few names. Thou hast a remnant. You know God has a church, is it? But is it is, is it the old church that is going through? The visible church? No, God has a remnant. Thou has a few names. Even though Israel may have children as many as the sons of the sea, only a remnant will return, is it? That is what Isaiah says. Only a remnant will return. And so he says, Thou has a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that does what? Overcometh. The same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I'll not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord said unto the churches. And so the Lord is promising. Every church, we have a promise that uh, the Lord is uh, giving unto us. And uh, 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 just uh, look at Philadelphia. This is the church just that entered with Christ into the most holy place. A door was opened before them. A door is opened before them. Him that overcometh. I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon the name of my God. Uh, it is wonderful that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I meditate upon these things when I read them. What is the most important thing in the Church of Philadelphia? Uh, I want you to see it. And I... Uh, Revelation chapter 3 verses 12. It says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, I'll write upon him my new name. So, the Church of Philadelphia enters the most holy place. And 
in the most holy place it is where all the system of truth was revealed to the astonished eyes is it the cleansing of the sanctuary open to us to our astonished eyes 1844 open to them the uh, 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 open to their astonished eyes, the, the system of truth, the cleansing of the sanctuary, it gave them all the systems of the truth. And uh, the Lord says that him that overcome, he that is Philadelphia, who has entered in through this door that is open and remaineth there, he is a pillar. He holds the temple. The structure cannot go down. The most important part of a building is the pillar. Is it? Yeah. And which condition must we be in at the time of translation? Philadelphian condition, is it? Yeah, this is the condition we are called in. So what are we called to be? Pillars of the church. That is what we are called to be. And so a system of truth has been opened to us. What does it mean that a door was opened for them? A door was opened to them a system of truth so that uh, they may not backslide unto other falsehood that were remaining outside the closed door. They were not to go back to those falsehood. They were not to draw back to backslide. But he tells them that they must remain a pillar in this temple that they are entering. He will make them a pillar and they shall no more go out. Do you see Victor Overseen? Yeah, you, you don't have to go back. God is saying that you have entered into the open door. Why should you go back? You are a pillar already. If you go back, the structure falls. The whole church comes down because you are holding the pillars of the church. No wonder the church today is in such a state that it is. Because the church, when it entered into the most holy place, they became the pillars of the last church. And they started going out, and you see how Seventh Adventism is? The structure is almost down. If it is remaining, maybe only one pillar. And what is that one pillar? The Sabbath. And even the Sabbath itself is not kept. But look at the other system of truth in the open door. We, we, we can uh, just, uh, uh, in quick uh, mention, uh, some of these things. Let me see if uh, I, 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 I can find them and name them for you. A, a door is closed, a door of errors and such a continuance in the things of childhood and a people are opened a door into maturity and made pillars of the last day church, but they start growing back. I, I just want to uh, let you see uh, some of the things that uh, were revealed to the Church of Philadelphia that made them uh, the last church and what made them to be uh, some of the pillars of the church, some of the things that were revealed to the church uh, was the law of God and the Sabbath of the Sabbath, the faith of Jesus Christ, the personality of God and Jesus Christ, the sanctuary, the non-immortality of um, uh, the wicked, the three angels' messages, and the testimony of Jesus Christ. But when you look at these pillars, the law and the Sabbath, and uh, we can look at the law in its totality. Is Seventh Day Adventism or keeping the law or not keeping the law? That is a subject uh, to uh, some disputes and all these things that are, are coming in. But um, you find that um, what is the totality of the law? The love of God and the love of the neighbor. That is the totality of the law. But um, uh, God's purpose in giving the third angel's message is to make the people stand during what? Investigative judgment 1MR. 12MR, 1MR. 1MR 228, is it? Yes. And this is how we maintain what? 
publishing houses, food, hygienic restaurant, food factories, and our treatment rooms. And what, what is this actually? What, what are you naming? Can you put them in simple words? What are you naming actually? What you are just doing, you are naming the things that should be done in Isaiah chapter 58. The love for the neighbor, is it? That is the totality of the law. The love of God and the love of the neighbor. So are we doing these things? You can find that the law has been trodden now. Yet man claims to love the Lord with all their hearts. But can you love the Lord with all your hearts, the Lord you have not seen, if you don't love your neighbor? There is no way you can do this. When you look at uh, uh, the faith of Jesus Christ, what is the faith of Jesus Christ? The faith of Jesus Christ is talked about, but it is not understood. What is it? What are we told it is? The faith of Jesus Christ is talked about, but uh, it is not uh, uh, understood. What is the faith of Jesus Christ that constitutes the third angel's message? You hear that here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have uh, uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ or the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saint. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. What, what is the faith of Jesus Christ that constitutes the third angel's message? Can you check 12 MR 193.4? What is this faith? Because we are talking about the pillars in the church of Philadelphia that holds the church that has been crumbled down. 12 MR 193.4. What is this faith? Yes. The faith of Jesus Christ is talked of but not understood. Yes. Yes. Is the faith of Jesus Christ. So the faith of Jesus Christ is talked about. This is one of the pillars that um, the church was given, the faith of Jesus Christ. So we have the law of God, which we find that the love for neighbor is one thing, and it is found in 1 MR 228. We are finding the faith of Jesus Christ is in 12 MR 193, and it's about victor over sin. Do we, do we find such a teachings of victor over sin in our church today? This is something unbeknown to us. There are pastors who tell you boldly that if even the elders and even lay members, that as long as you still have this body, you will never overcome sin. Until Jesus Christ comes and translates us, then we shall be perfect before him. No, this is not the faith of Jesus Christ. We look at the personality of God and the personality of Jesus Christ. Is it something that we still hold on to? And we cannot even go on to this right now. And... May the Lord help us if we will worship false gods. The non-immortality of souls. How many among us, the non-immortality of soul? How many of us still? And I, I, I can twist it in another way, the non-immortality of soul. Think about this. When a person comes to Jesus Christ, does he die? He dies to sell. Do you believe that you are dead? To sell. That means that you have victory over sin, is it? The old man does not fool you, okay? But then, what if the new man is communicating with the old man? I, I want you to look at it, uh, that aspect also. That uh, actually, when we go back to sin, it is just believing that the old man is not dead. It can still function in us. 
we must reach at a point that we don't accept to communicate with the dead man. And we must live in the new man. It says that, uh, walk ye in the spirit and will not what? Gratify the sinful lust of the flesh. The old man, the old man is dead. When you entered into the water, you crucified the old man and you came up a new man with the glory of God. The new man has nothing to do with the dead man. This is the simple victor over sin that you have to understand. The old man is dead. Don't go communicating to him once again. When he tries to speak to you, just remember, this is spiritualism in one way or another. Re re reject him and say that I'm in the new man, I'm in Christ, I'm not going to the old way. Another pillar, you are to be the pillar of the last, the, the three angels' messages. How do you proclaim the three angels' messages when you don't have food factories, when you don't have sanitariums, when you don't have schools and uh, uh, that teach true education? There is no way you can proclaim the three angels' messages. And then another one that we were given is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And some are rejecting the testimony of Jesus Christ is not the spirit of prophecy. Yes, I'll not be naive to claim that it should be narrowed down to E.G. White. No. The Lord says that in the end time, he will raise up prophets, but not in the capacity of E.G. White. Do you know why it's not in the capacity of Jesus uh, of E.G. White? E.G. White is a type of who? Moses. Do you, do you know what is written of Moses? There arose no other prophet like Moses. Have you ever thought about this? Moses, just prior to the promised land, he died, is it? And received what? Special resurrection, is it? And he had the book of the law besides the ark, is it? And there arose no other man like Moses in that generation, in that whole Jewish dispensation. You have to understand that in the whole Jewish dispensation, there was none like Moses. In the new dispensation, post cross, now we have another person who have the book of testimonies before the ark, and she dies, and we hope she will be specially resurrected, is it? A type of Moses. There will never arise another prophet like E.G. White. Never. And so some are rejecting her writings. And God is saying, these are some of the pillars. And uh, in, in just ending this, uh, we are told that the overcomers receive God's name, which we find in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. The Father's name. And then below I behold, and the 144 are standing on Mount Zion with the Father's name in their forehead. Much blessings is spoken of the children of God who do not draw back, but who go as the 144, there is no guile in their mouth. Jesus Christ had no guile in his mouth, and the 144 will have no guile in their mouth. In Revelation 3.21, to the most church which is uh, blind to what it is, the church that is so blind to itself. You know, Laodicea has a very great rebuke, but there is a promise for it as we close. Verse 21, it says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as also I overcame and am set down with my father in what? In the throne, in his throne. So God has a promise to every child. He has a promise to every one of us. And Every command of God is a promise unto us. And uh, lastly, his biddings. Christ object lesson, page 333, paragraph 1. His biddings are his enablings. God does not tell us, do this, and he leaves us without the strength to do it, without the power to do it. And so my plea, my urge today, that we may take the blessings of the book of Revelation and account them to ourselves and see Christ working in our lives and be able to finish the gospel work. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us as we contemplate upon this word. May the Lord continue strengthening us in every way that um, we may not see the 
magnitude of what the enemy can do. But we may see what Christ can do if we are hidden in him. You know, sometimes the reason why we are defeated with many things, you look at the mountain and you see Mount Everest and you wonder how you will climb it. But you know what? Christ can be able to make you not even climb Mount Everest. He says that if you have a, a faith like a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain, do what? Move and that's what? You, you, you don't have to climb Mount Everest. If the Mount Everest is before you, you don't have to start thinking how you will climb it. No, think about the power that Christ bestows and you can tell that mountain move and it moves. Uh, uh, I just want us to read this verse, Psalms, the division 121, and we pray. These are great promises in the word of God. Division of Psalms 121. Always remember that you can overcome. Amidst the beasts that are before you, you can always overcome. I think this is the only way we can make Revelation a simple book. Division of Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh what? My help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot or thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall ne neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy, go, thy coming in from this time forth and even for uh, uh, and even for ever even for ever more. Listen to this uh, uh, and I, I told you that um, every command of God is a promise unto our life. Every command of God is a promise in our life. Write this down. This is Christian education. 97.1. Christian education 97.1. Christian education 97.1. This is what it says. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ becomes a personality in those who believe and makes them living epistles known and read of all the men. In this way, the living of godliness passes into the multitude. The heavenly intelligences are able to discern the true elements of greatness in character for only goodness is esteemed as efficiency with God. We have to take the gospel and eat it, meditate upon it, eat the word of God until it becomes a personality. As we eat of the same word, then only what will come out of us is that holy thing. Christ is the word of God made audible. If we eat that word, it becomes a personality. The personality of Jesus Christ will dwell in us and we shall become living episodes. Now it is not me who lives, but who? Galatians chapter 2. Christ who does what? That is when you have eaten the word of God until it has become a personality in your life. You can become a new man in Christ and be an overcomer and count the blessings to be yours. Otherwise, God bless us and uh, we can pray and believe in the things we have read that Christ is able to give us the triumph that we need in him.